Good evening. Your host, General Electric. And this is true. On May 1st, 1960, the U-2 incident occurred. Khrushchev sabotaged the summit conference. On August 13th, 1961, the Berlin Wall went up. Between those two dates, the Cold War threatened to erupt into World War III. It was a time of maximum caution, maximum danger. For the next 30 minutes, security risk. West Germany, the city of Frankfurt, April 5th, 1961. At 2.30 that afternoon, a man named Wilhelm Frieda entered a telegraph office. Bitte ein Telegram nach Warschau. It's Fräulein Erika Rilke. <laughs> Erika Rilke, age 26, Polish citizen. The telegram advised her that her only brother was dying in a Frankfurt hospital. George Ellsworth, second secretary to the American Embassy in Warsaw, was the man she turned to. Erica, Erica, please don't cry. If it was just a matter of a visa, but you know the Polish government won't give you a passport to leave. If you would ask them, you're an important man. You could see your government. I can't on a personal matter. No, but you can come here when you're lonely. You can take me in your arms and say you love me. That you can do. Erica. Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. You've been very kind. Please forgive me. No, I've been selfish, Erica. I really have been. I'll, I'll try to do what I can. Believe me, I will. It'll, it'll, it'll work out somehow. I, I, I just know it will. Oh, you got to go. You got to go. Thank you. Gotta go to the office now. This evening, you'll be here. So we don't have to play it back for him. Warsaw, Poland, the only state in Europe flanked by the Russian army on both sides. A communist country, a hotbed of espionage, the building of most interest to communist agents, the American embassy. And especially one room in that building, the file room where all classified documents are kept. Jim Kowalski, a special agent for the State Department, was responsible for the security of those secrets. Thank you, Harry. See you later, Mr. Kowalski. Hi. Hi. You taking Marie and the kids to the plane? Yeah. Well, while they're gone, be sure you come over to the house for dinner. When are you going on your vacation? Oh, a week, ten days. Say goodbye for me, will you? Okay. It was April 7th. George Ellsworth's wife, Marie, and their children left for Paris to visit her parents. George would be alone in Warsaw for two weeks. Then he would join them. At least, that was the plan.
Mr. Ellsworth? Excuse me, but aren't you Mr. George Ellsworth of the American Embassy? That's right. I'm Stefan Yarrick of the Polish government. Passport division. Oh, Mr. Yarrick, uh, what can I do for you? A young Polish girl by the name of uh, Erika Rilke. She applied for a passport. Evidently, she has no family, no one. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I'm detaining you now. No, no. Uh, can I buy you a drink? Yes, thank you very much. Naturally, when a request comes from an official of your government, a uh, high official, we choose to cooperate. I don't believe I understand you. Quite simple. You wanted something, we delivered it. Now, Mr. Ellsworth, we want something. Would you like to take pictures with the camera, Mr. Ellsworth? You're wasting your time. Documents, Mr. Ellsworth. Classified documents from your embassy files. Do you know what would happen if I were to report this? <laughs> what would you report? That you, a married man with children, have been secretly involved with another woman for months. I would deny it, and so would her. So would she. It would be your word against ours. <laughs> Not entirely. You see, I take pictures too. I have some excellent studies of you and Miss Wilkie together in automobiles, on picnics, entering her apartment. Would you care to see them? I shall expect to hear from you very soon. Thank you very much for the drink. George Ellsworth was leaving government service on the 1st of June, going back to America with his wife and children. He had been in the State Department for five years. His record was excellent. He had only seven more weeks to go. Well, hello, Mr. Ellsworth. Something I can do for you? Harry, the classified material for the past two weeks. Please, could I read it? Of course. It's in my family way. I'm trying to catch up with my work. There you are. I'm not keeping you late, am I? Oh, no, no. I'm just weeding out some of the old stuff. I'll be here for a couple of more hours at least. You don't have to stay on my account. Check over your daily log. Yes, sir. When are you going to come over for dinner? Oh, one of these nights. I've been busy. Good. Hi, George. Hi, George. Uh, Harry, I'll be here at 8. Yes, sir. Boy, I must be losing my marbles. Why, what's wrong? I brought the wrong folder and I left my pipe. Would you excuse me a minute? Of course. Be right back. Four nights after he was approached by Yarick, George Ellsworth photographed his first top secret document. In 1961, West Germany had no diplomatic relations with Poland. As a courtesy, visas were handled for West Germany by the American consulate. On April 21st, Jim Kowalski was called to the office of Tom Erickson, American vice consul. Tom? Hi, Jim. Sit down. Hey. Thanks for the time, Jim. I thought it wiser to see you rather than use the phone. Was there anything wrong? No, I'm just puzzled. Maybe there's nothing to it, probably isn't, but I can't get something out of my mind. What is it? Well, this morning, my office issued a visa to a Polish girl, Erica Rilke. She has a brother in Frankfurt, dying. Here's the telegram summoning her. You think the passport's a fraud? No, I checked. The Polish government issued the passport. But you see, that's what troubles me. 
It's unusual for the Poles to give passports to young, able-bodied people. Almost unheard of. Why this girl? You think they're sending out an agent? Well, I thought I'd check with you. Maybe you might have something on file. Here's a copy of her passport picture. She's pretty. She have uh, any family in Warsaw? Mm -hmm. Relatives? Employer? No, but there is one other thing. She knows a man here in the embassy. He escorted her personally through the consulate, hurried the visa through. But diplomatic officials often do that. It's a show of courtesy. This was not a show of courtesy, Jim. He was insistent, almost to the point of rudeness. Who is it? George Ellsworth. Roy, uh, Jim Kowalski. I want to send a message in code. Uh, ben Waltman, security officer, American consulate, Frankfurt. Please verify identity, address, occupation. Klaus Rilke, reported dying, Frankfurt Hospital. Urgent. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, Harry, you want to see what we have in the file on that woman? Her name is Rilke, and the address is on the uh, telegram. Mm -hmm. uh, Harry, uh, has George been in the file room much lately? Every night, until yesterday, he said he wanted to get all caught up before he went on vacation. The message came back from Ben Waltman in Frankfurt the next day, April 22nd. No Klaus Rilke in hospital in Frankfurt. Name not listed anywhere. Suggest no such person. Who? Oh, Jim Kowalski. There's a new leave roster out, Jen. You got it handy? George Ellsworth's going on vacation tomorrow, 10 days. Where'd he put in for? Frankfurt. On the morning of April 24th, George Ellsworth checked into a Frankfurt hotel. A few hours later, Jim Kowalski arrived in Frankfurt. He was met by Ben Waltman, who advised him that Ellsworth was being kept under constant surveillance. Ellsworth and Fraulein Rilke returned to their hotel later that afternoon to find Wilhelm Frieda waiting for them. His identity and address were already being traced by the police. Frieda gave them the keys to his car, which he had driven to the hotel. Who was that man down there? How did he know I was here? Wilhelm? Whoever he was, what does he know? What did you tell him? Oh, uh, Wilhelm is an old friend, George. He's the one who sent the telegram about my brother. Don't you realize that if they find out what I've done and then they find us here to... Who else did you tell? George. Look, I'm gonna go back to Warsaw. You want me to be ashamed? I am not ashamed. When you were lonely, you came to me. And when I needed help, I came to you. Why is that so wrong? Wrong? I'll tell you what's wrong. It's what I did to help you. I betrayed a trust, Erica, not only morally, but legally. George, because you loved me. It's a pretty poor excuse for a married man. Oh, that's the reason, isn't it? It's your wife you're worried about. Not me or your job, it's her. Well, I've got her up to here. Stop it! Listen, Erica, I hope finding an apartment here. I'll pay six months' rent in advance. You're so generous with money when you have no more use for me. How could you possibly say a thing like that to me after what I did for you? I was a traitor to my country so you could have a passport to leave Poland. Now, isn't that enough for you? Don't leave me. I don't want to leave you, Erica. 
I don't want to leave you, but I have to. I, just don't cry. Just please don't cry. I was alone. I had no one. I told myself it would have to be that way. Why? Why did I have to meet you? Why? Why? The preliminary report on George Ellsworth identified Wilhelm Frieda. It also included the license number and the description of the car Frieda had turned over to Ellsworth. The Frankfurt police had used the license number to obtain a photostat of Frieda's driver's license. But there were no facts indicating treason or espionage. The Frankfurt Telegraph Company traced the telegram to the office from which it had been sent. The original copy was on file in the sender's handwriting. Kowalski compared the handwriting and signature to the signature on the photostat of the driver's license belonging to Wilhelm Frieda. They were identical. Why did the Polish government issue a passport to that girl? Unless it was quid pro quo, payment for something. From the girl? No, they didn't do it for the girl. Did it for Ellsworth. What kind of payment? I don't want to guess, Ben. I got to know. It was April 25th. Jim Kowalski had five weeks to find out. He returned to Warsaw, asked for and received a private interview with the American ambassador. He revealed his suspicions and recommended that the security file be desensitized. Recommendation granted. He asked permission that a special camera be concealed in the file room. Request granted. Okay, Harry. This will pick up anyone sitting at the table. I sure hope it works. It didn't work. George Ellsworth returned to Warsaw on May 4th. He never went into the file room again. On the 24th, Jim Kowalski had one more meeting with the ambassador. There's less than a week left, sir, and there's only one more thing that I can do to confront him with the girl and Wilhelm Frieda in Frankfurt. I'd like to have Ellsworth's orders change, route him to Frankfurt instead of directly to Paris. It's a wild gamble, sir, but I'm gonna have to take it. Request granted. George Ellsworth's orders were changed. Seem to be giving you quite a send-off. Yeah. When's your plane leave for Paris? Well, I'm not going to Paris with Marie and the kids. I'm taking the midnight plane for Frankfurt. It's a change of orders. Why Frankfurt? Well, I'm supposed to meet with a protocol officer there. I, I suppose it's a briefing session with my successor. Listen, Jim, I'm not very good at saying goodbyes. I guess I'm the kind of person that doesn't like to let go of anything. Want everything for keeps. But I'm gonna miss you and Louise and the kids. Those ski trips and <laughs> those cheeseburgers you make every Sunday afternoon. Well, George, keep in touch. George, good luck. Nine o'clock that evening, George Ellsworth arrived at the consulate in Frankfurt. He was directed to Ben Waltman's office. Please, sit down. Thank you. Actually, Mr. Ellsworth, I'm here because I wanted a few minutes with you. I need your help. A passport matter. Oh? The German police picked up a woman named Erika Rilke. They think her passport and visa are fraudulent. Now, she says she knows you slightly. Says you helped her in some way. Well, yes, yes, I remember, but I can assure you that her passport and visa were quite in order. Know her well? Oh, uh, no, no, not uh, very. She, she was orphaned during the war. She's poor. Uh, she wanted to get out of Warsaw for good. She has a brother here in Frankfurt, and he's uh, very sick. In fact, he's dying, and... Hello, George. What is this? Well, there are a few questions we want answered. I don't have to answer anything. Will you bring Miss Rilke in, please? 
George, oh, Michael, I have to see you. What's this all about? Now, just take it easy, darling. Just take it easy. All right, Jim. Obviously, you know about us. So? We know. You were together here in April. We had you under surveillance. This is my private life, Jim. Stay out of it. You were taken, George. You've been had. What? She's lied How to him. How can you say such a thing? That's you not true. You lied to him. He's the one that's lying, darling. I don't believe him. What are they trying to do? She's booked passage on a plane for Warsaw. Tomorrow. She never wanted to leave Poland. <laughs> Did you? No. No, I swear to you, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. No. You know this man, George? He sent the telegram to Miss Rilke about her dying brother, and we don't have to prove that. He's admitted it. Du Feigling. Du niederträchtige Sound! Sound! Przepraszam, Sound! Pani. To ja mu zrobić nie miałem innego wychodziska. Cholera! Powiadam pani, nie miałem innego wychodziska. We've checked on the brother. He doesn't exist. He never existed. You've been had. You were taken, George. George! Don't believe it. Oh. George! George. George. George, you've got to tell me the truth. Did you give any secret information to the communists? I don't know what you're talking about. Now, just leave me alone. George, don't lie to me. I've got to know what kind of information it was. Look, a lot of classified material goes into Poland by telegram in code. George, stop! Listen to me! Listen! You're not a traitor. I know that. You just got trapped. The communists have got copies of those telegrams. If you pass them any translations, they can crack that code. We've got to know. We can't go on sending messages in a code that they know. George, I can't stop you, you know that. By midnight tonight, you'll be on your way home. We'll never know, but you'll know. And I don't think you can live with that, George. You're taking your kids home to teach them they're Americans. Who's going to teach them that, George? You? You can't keep it inside you. I know you too well. Sooner or later, you'll tell. And it may be too late. By keeping quiet about it now, it might cause damage to hundreds, thousands of people because you didn't speak up in time. Did you give decoded material to the communists? It takes guts. I know you got them. It happened the way you said, Jim. The way they planned it. A woman, black male. I guess I got panicky. I, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought that maybe once and then they let me off the hook. But it didn't work that way. I kept getting in deeper. How many documents? Six. But none of it was decoded stuff, Jim, I swear to that. It's mostly material that our local intelligence officers gathered about the communist activities around Warsaw, things the communists already knew. But all they gained was that now they know that we know a lot of their secrets. There was no coded stuff, Jim. You want to go back upstairs, tell it for the record? diplomatic circles, it's often said that peace or war may hinge on who reads a single piece of paper. Because of that, the problem of security is a vital one. Now, there aren't many Jim Kowalskis. The State Department's Office of Security numbers just 235 men. We have 300 missions overseas. It's a big job, but then they're big men.
General Electric, progress is our most important product. Mm -hmm.